Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to our Sunday starter kits, which have uh, themselves gotten off to a bumpy start, but we're, we're back and we're doing a starter kit every Sunday in which I pick some topic, or more likely you do, and I give you some suggestions, a handful of suggestions, what I hope is really interesting reading on that subject. And uh, the, the suggestion today comes from Finland, <laughs> and it's about ancient Egypt, an ancient Egypt starter kit. And that's, as you can tell right there, an almost impossible task. Ancient Egypt was the, the, a center of the entire world for 3,000 years. That's, that generates a lot of literature and was a center of the whole discipline of archaeology for the last 250 years. So it's taken some pairing to do and also some figuring out of how to go about it. If for instance, we stick to the idea of a starter kit as, at least on one level, a way for you to to make your way into a subject, then you might think that the place to start with any subject would be in what that subject wrote about itself. And that's not true with ancient Egypt. We have a large amount of ancient Egypt literature. A large amount. And we'll get to it in the starter kit. But you can't start out that way, because they are fairly inscrutable. And the, even with the best introduction and notes in the world, the literature will benefit, you will benefit from reading histories first. And when it comes to reading histories of ancient Egypt, you are presented with an absolute flood of choices. Starting in the Napoleonic era, but reaching a peak in the Victorian era, as usual, the Victorians were better at everything they did than anybody else has ever been. And uh, there was a volume of Egyptology, of ancient Egypt history, in the Victorian era that was a towering work. Just everybody knew it. Every book, every bookshop had it. Every bookstore clerk knew that if you came in saying, I want the book about the pyramids, this is the book you wanted. It's by uh, Sir John, uh, Sir J. Gardner Wilkinson. And it's this, it's the ancient Egyptians, their life and customs. I don't know if it's still in print, uh, but it, was the one volume once once it was once it was compiled into one volume it was the one volume it was the one work of, of sort of overall narrative history of the ancient egyptians that everybody went to and i was years and years and years and years ago i was working on a, a fictional project a fiction project and i i had taken to going to a little branch library right up the street from my home you could see it from my window tiny little one room place that was just the, uh, this tiny little branch library uh, and they had a copy of this just in their circulation it had never been deaccessed, so I got a chance to get to know it really well I got a chance to know that staff really well too just two people <laughs> but I was almost always the only person there and they could tell right away that I was working that I was doing something concerted every day I was just going there for the peace and quiet uh, and librarians tend to respond well to that. They like it when their precincts are used. I don't know how they're making it through the pandemic. But one way or another, uh, Wilkinson has a narrative charm. Very much so. He's not the only Wilkinson we're going to encounter in this starter kit. So I would say if you can find a copy of this book, or maybe it's free, maybe it's at Project Gutenberg, I would say give it a try. Uh, read through it. I think you can make it all. It's a long work, but I think you can make it all the way through it, and I think you'll enjoy what you find. Uh, but that is... Uh, ancient Egyptian history. There's also modern uh, Egyptian history, but we're going to make our way there at one intermediary step because there's a name when it comes to Egyptology, when it comes to studies of the customs, the cultures, the myths, the society of ancient Egypt. There's a name that probably towers above all others, uh, and you can't leave him off a starter kit. And uh, the name is E.A. Wallace Budge, and probably his most popular book is The Mummy which is just a study of one of ancient Egypt's most renowned and often misunderstood social customs, which is mollification. Uh, the, the, the Egyptologists out there, the archaeologists out there are probably wincing just a little, but maybe with a wistful look on their face because they cut their teeth on budge. Everybody did. And they might be thinking, well, okay, but study, the, the study, the discipline has moved on. It certainly has. But I still think budge belongs in any starter kit on the subject. And I would say, I mean, he wrote books on Egyptian mythology. He wrote books on Egyptian customs and social mores and whatnot. But I would say his book on the mummy is, is the thing of his to read. If you're only going to read one thing, he wrote a whole shelf of books. So, uh, you'd want to read only one thing. Then we'll do another, uh, Wilkinson. This is a modern, a much more modern book, much more comprehensive. This is the rise and fall of ancient Egypt by Toby Wilkinson. 
Um, really good. It just it, when people ask me, people often do, whether it's on Ancient Egypt or any other starter kit subject, people will often ask me, what's the best one volume book? What's a one volume book that I can go to my library and get on this subject? No matter what it is, no matter who it is. And this is the one that I that I tend to recommend. I'm sorry that it looks so bland, but I, the book itself is really a good place to start. If that's the way you like to get into a subject with one volume that covers it from soup to nuts, then this is the one to do. I reviewed this book when it first came out uh, for the Wall Street Journal, I think. Um, the Boston Globe. I don't know who I reviewed this for. I forget who I reviewed this for, but I reviewed it and I really liked it. I don't have a copy at the moment, but uh, your library will certainly have this. They will have kept it for for the permanent collection. So it's a perfect, the two Wilkinses together will show you how the, the art of writing these long comprehensive histories has changed over the century. Uh, they're both really, really good. Uh, there's, but uh, when, ancient Egypt, we know ancient, unlike most other ancient societies, we know ancient Egypt a lot from the visuals, I would argue more from the visuals than we know from texts or the histories. So a heavily illustrated book, the, neither of the Wilkinson, the, the, the first Wilkinson book from the Victorian era has black and white spot drawings throughout. And the Toby Wilkinson book has an, in, the usual inset of eight color pages. But really when you're looking at a starter kit of ancient Egypt, you want, a, another thing that you want is a heavily illustrated work, something that shows as much as it tells. I have a few of those that I want to recommend, starting with the Oxford History of Ancient Egypt, uh, one of their the big oversized trade paperbacks that they do of on any different subject. They're all of those. That whole series is really good. The one on Ancient Egypt is really good, and it's profusely illustrated. Uh, and there are some that I have here that are only illustrations. There's one in particular that I want to get to. I, I save these things out of order, but I, that doesn't matter because uh, the iPad makes it easy. Uh, yeah, Doran Kindersley, DK, they do a series of books called Eyewitness, and they do one for Ancient Egypt that they routinely update. These are thin books. They are, uh, they are characterized, they are marketed as children's books, but they are wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. You could do a lot worse for an introduction to any historical subject than to have a whole shelf of DK Eyewitness books. And this, they, they do a bigger volume for Ancient Egypt, but this is all that you really need. This will show you beautiful page-by-page page illustrations of uh, bowls, utensils, houses for the great and the, and the lowly, pyramids, uh, funerary objects, texts, archaeological expeditions from the 19th century. This will show you everything in beautiful photography. And they've, had, they've updated this many, many times, so a used copy of this, of some previous edition, may be in your used bookstore right now and is well worth it, well worth it. These, are, these eyewitness books don't get the amount of credit they deserve for what a great introduction they are to their subject. Uh, and there's another, there's another thing that's heavily illustrated uh, that I also want to recommend to you. And I have it, I have it here on the iPad, but I also have it, I, want, I thought a few uh, in-person props would also be good. So let me, let me show you this in person. This is Thames and Hudson. They also did a series. This is Chronicles of the Pharaohs by Peter Clayton, which takes you reign by reign through all of the pharaohs, all of the dynasties. And they do a number of these books. They do um, for Roman emperors, for the Roman Republic, for the Russian czars, for the saints, for the popes. Uh, they're tremendous. They're tremendously good. The whole series is. But uh, this one is my favorite. This is the one that I kept. Uh, and it gives you profiles of each person, but with lots of other stuff too. You get insets for timelines, you get insets for bloodlines, and you get all of the requisite uh, illustrations from all of the Egyptology collections all, all over the world. So I want to recommend Chronicles of the Pharaohs. I'm pretty sure this thing is still in print and still available. And as an introduction, yes, it's it's a person-heavy introduction, but as an introduction to ancient Egypt, it's really, really good. Uh, okay, that was probably inevitable. Uh, and I believe that covers it uh, for overviews of, of Egypt. Uh, and then once you've read all the overviews, you will be ready for uh, Egyptian literature. And there is a very good example of that. The Penguin Classics, my beloved Penguin, does the Egyptian Book of the Dead. A fairly, a fairly hefty compendium of religious, of religious practices, religious rites and incantations, spells and uh, prayers and psalms and whatnot. And uh, I, I believe that you will be much better served. This has a great introduction. Uh, uh, it's translated by E.A. Wallace Budge. Uh, but the introduction is by John Romer, who also did a couple of Ancient Egypt volumes that are really good. 
Uh, it's got a wonderful introduction and wonderful notes. You'll be well served by those, but it's much better if you come at this having read a lot about ancient Egypt first. There are no spoils, <laughs> spoilers in a culture that's 3,000 years old, so you're not ruining anything to do it in that order, and I think it will help a lot uh, to, to come to this from there. Uh, and there's plenty of other ancient Egyptian literature. Budge wrote a whole bunch of volumes on it. Also, Penguin has at least one other volume on it. Uh, but once, let me see, how are we going to go on from here? Once you're done with the overviews, and you are done with the literature, and you've read the literature, then you want to move forward in time. There's no way that this could stay off a starter kit about ancient Egypt, but uh, it's it's uh, one of the ironies of history that ancient Egypt is easily most well known through the person of one particular character who occurred at the very end of that whole 3,000 years, long after the glory that rose the pyramids and tamed the Nile. Long, long after that, when that, further away from that than we are from the ancient world. Uh, and also that it had not a drop of Egyptian blood <laughs> in her veins. Of course, I'm talking about Cleopatra. We think about the two of them as synonymous, as she very much wanted us to do. Uh, and and so no no ancient Egypt starter kit is complete without a book on Cleopatra, and there is no book other than Stacey Schiff's biography of Cleopatra. You have heard about, if you're on BookTube, you've heard about this many, many times. You might be thinking, well, I don't read biographies, I don't read ancient history, so no matter how good people say it is, it can't be that good. It won't it won't pull me in. It will. It absolutely will. This is a fantastic reading experience. All I'm saying, do you want to take my word for it? Although at this point you should. <laughs> all, all I'm asking is that you try it out. Try the first chapter. If it, does, if it reads like a stodgy biography, then you have my permission to put it back on the shelf, but you won't. And I couldn't leave Cleopatra out, even though she's not Egyptian except in her heart but not in her DNA or anything like that. And then once you get to uh, to the modern era, then you're looking at Egypt through the, the lens of modernity. And that invites us to come up with some novels, some fictional treatments of ancient Egypt. And I have two that I want to recommend to you. Now, ancient Egypt crops up most often uh, in murder mystery series. There have been five or six modern 20th century and 21st century murder mystery series set in ancient Egypt at one point or another in ancient Egypt. Uh, and they've done really well. They've reached far a, a large number of people. The, by far the biggest uh, blockbuster <laughs> for ancient Egypt, outside of stuff like Budge, who reached millions of readers. But in terms of a fictional treatment, uh, would be a Finnish writer, <laughs> Mir Waltari. Who uh, w is the, the, that is the ultimate origin of this whole of this whole starter kit is that they, that author uh, wrote a historical novel about a character named Sinue uh, that was translated into English as the Egyptian and sold a bucket load of copies, just a bucket load. It's largely forgotten today. I don't think the, there's an English language translation of the Egyptian that's in your bookstore right now. That's in print right now. You could just go in and pick out. There are probably endless numbers of translations that are available. Certainly all of the English language translations are available online used. I'm sure they are. But there was a Book of the Month Club. There were uh, ornate hardcovers. There was a hardcover, just a normal dust jacketed hardcover that sold like griddle cakes. There was a little mass market paperback. This was right at the beginning of the mass market paperback revolution in the United States that sold a mountain of copies. I don't know, I don't have any hard figures on what the sales were for Waltari in the United States, whether or not they made him a wealthy man. Uh, but one way or another, I know that for a long, long eon, there was no way to escape that. It was just like the Wilkinson book, where, if, where for a long time, if you were a bookstore clerk in the United States and someone came in looking for that book about the Egyptian, that's the book they were looking for. Uh, so you might be surprised to see that that is not on this list. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I have I have only read it in translation. Of course, I don't read Finnish. Uh, but I wanted to recommend more contemporary, two more contemporary fictional treatments. And the first one is one that, unlike Waltari, Waltari, does not get known at all. And they're fantastic. These books are incredibly good. So I don't know why they they never caught on. Maybe because they're longer than normal murder mysteries and far more complex, far more like uh, C.J. Sansom than than they are like you know uh, uh, some short really quick series. And they're by Nick Drake. 
the one I picked here is Egypt, the Book of Chaos, but he also wrote one on, I think, Nefertiti, wrote a book on Tutankhamun. Uh, they star the same character, his same protagonist, and they're amazingly good. These should have caught on to a much greater extent than they did. I don't think they're in print anymore, uh, so I don't know. You'd have to go and look for them, but it'd be worth the search, very much so. Uh, and if those aren't in print anymore, then the one I'm going to recommend next is not in print anymore. This is by Carol Thurston. It's called The Eye of Horus. And it splits its narrative between the ancient world, the ancient Egypt, and, fascinatingly, a team of archaeologists in the present day. And that allows Carol Thurston to do a huge amount of exposition dumping in the course of this book. And I would ordinarily excoriate that, but her exposition dumps are fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. You will learn more about the, the ways and means of Egyptology from this book than you will learn from a mountain of nonfiction works on the subject. So I wanted, rec I'm sure that it's out of print, but I wanted to recommend it if there's an ebook or maybe there's a used copy that you can find. If you see this and you're interested in the subject of ancient Egypt, get it because you're going to love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, and there, I think that leaves us with only one more thing. There's only one more thing uh, for an ancient Egypt starter kit. I absolutely could not do this without. And we're going to finish with this. <laughs> I'm going to read you a story, a bit of a story. Uh, this is a book that I've recommended on this channel many, many, many times. Uh, and it's by Eve Bunting with illustrations by David Christiana. And it's called I Am the Mummy, Heb Neffert. It's a children's picture book. Uh, and it, that's how it starts out. I am the mummy, Heb Neffert. Uh, and it starts out uh, that way, with, with a mummified face. So you wouldn't think, I am the mummy, Heb Neffert, black as night, stretched as tight as leather on a drum. My arms are folded on my hollow chest, where once my live heart beat. My ears are holes that hear no sound. Once I was the daughter of a nomarch, favored, beautiful, but all things change. She dances for her beloved and, and uh, wears a cone of scented wax on her head for the boiling hot evenings. They put a cone of scented wax on your head and as it melts, it, it ameliorates your own scent. It makes you scented. Uh, and she has a, a beloved cat. Of course, nobody's perfect. <laughs> we sailed upon the Nile, my lord and I, the wild fowl rising from the reeds along the bank the ripples of the sacred river soft against our boat. Sometimes we saw a hippopotamus, great jaws agape, a crocodile, but we were ever safe. At times my husband threw a stick, which is what ancient Egyptians used to do. They, they threw a stick to kill prey, uh, to go hunting, uh, to bring a winged birds down. My cat, well-trained in gentleness, would run along the banks to fetch them back. So good a cat, my husband, swift and strong, he seldom missed. We'd wander the gardens, he and I, beside the pleasure lake where lotus blossoms grew. The servant girl would come on soundless feet and bring us fruit, grapes, dates, figs. The baskets balanced on their heads, a cloth of linen spread beneath the canopy that kept us from the sun, and we would feast while the harpists played. And we don't see them. We see just, there they are in reflection, but we see the beautiful natural world just all around them. And we get these, these, beautiful, these beautiful spare uh, portraits of what their daily life was like. And eventually, uh, all of that changes. Time moves on, and all of that changes. I watched, I rose above myself, I watched. I watched as they anointed me with oils and spices, took away the parts of me that were inside, and filled me up with natron, cinnamon, and herbs. My eyes were closed and plugged. Beeswax fills my nose. They capped my nails with gold, studded with precious stones, bejeweled me from head to toe, <coughs> and bound me up in linen, layer on layer. I was to be, for all eternity, well kept for him, well kept for her lord, for her husband. They made a mask, painted to look like me, bound up my cat and masked her too, placed me in my sarcophagus, pictured around with likenesses of gods who would receive me, that sled that took me to my tomb was pulled by oxen. Behind, the lines of weepers wept and sprinkled dust about their heads to show their grief. Porters carried things that I would need, the food that I would eat, my jewels, amulets, my offerings to the gods, as they place her 
in a sarcophagus and then in a stone tomb. And she meets Horus, the god of the underworld, who you will meet in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Uh, and eventually her husband also dies and joins her in this weird state, in the modern era, in glass cases, at a museum, the little boy looking at these odd things. Uh, I rose up above myself and watched as people came. They peered into the cases where we lay. Look at that. They spoke, the words unknown to me, but understood as they were said. Was this a person? And this? And this? How foolish that they do not see how all things change, and so will they. Three thousand years from now, they will be dust and bones. I am the mummy, Heb Nefert, black as night, stretched as tight as leather on a drum. Once, I was beautiful. Couldn't end an ancient Egyptian starter kit without this book. Pretty sure this is still in print. I cannot recommend it strongly enough, and not necessarily just for children. Uh, and there you go. That is our Sunday starter kit for today. It's Ancient Egypt. The wonders of Ancient Egypt. Of course, this only scratches the surface. There's so much more. You could teach yourself hieroglyphics. There are plenty of, of little kits that will teach you how to do that. Again, often pitched for children, but fascinating nonetheless. And this is just the beginning. There's so much more to do. Most of the writers that I mentioned here wrote many things on Ancient Egypt, not just the one thing. But we're going to stop here. That is the Ancient Egypt starter kit going out to snowy Finland. <laughs> and we will meet again next Sunday for another starter kit. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.